All right, welcome YouTube. Uh, my name is Bobby. This is Quincy Squid Garage. We're a relatively newer channel. I'm trying to get this thing up and running, doing uh, things out in the garage. I'm always doing things, and my kid was like, Dad, why don't you do a YouTube channel? So here we are. Um, trying to get a uh, decent amount of subscribers, decent amount of views, trying to do content you guys like. So uh, I've got this 1989 Jeep Wrangler YJ that I've been messing with um, recently. I've had it for years. It's been parked. And um, I don't know what happened to it, but we got some issues. So I had a previous video. I've got the valve cover off now. I thought I had a timing issue, and I don't. So I'm going to be removing the head. I'm going to show you how to do that and hopefully uh, check out my cylinders and see how those uh, that bottom end looks. But right now the head's going to be coming off and uh, probably replacing all those itty-bitty parts in there. We'll go with new rockers, valve springs, lifters probably. I don't know. We'll, we're going to take it apart and see what happens. Um, but, yeah. So it hasn't ran in probably almost five years now. So uh, it's just been parked. I had a vacuum line issues, and I just never really had time to mess with it. I had another vehicle, and it kind of just sat. And I'm you know, usually working, you know, 12 hours a day. And when I get home, I didn't have time to mess with it. And fortunately for me, COVID has been good. Um, I know it hasn't been good for everybody, but for me, I've had lots of time and I'm like, oh, now I have time to work on projects. So I worked on my boat a little bit. I worked on, uh, you know, my truck. I've worked on, you know, lots of different things. I bought some cars, sold some cars, and this one always just kind of went on the back burner. So now I'm trying to get, get it going because I want to sell it. I've got another project I need to get in here and, um, actually two projects. So three projects right now, this one's got to go first. So without further ado, let's get right into looking at what we got here. Okay, so what I'm dealing with right now is I got no oil in a lot of these. And the truck was turning over. I was getting rotation and I wasn't firing off. And I was like, man, maybe my timing's messed up because my distributor was moved a little bit when it was shipped. I had the vehicle shipped from Hawaii to um, Dallas, Texas. And then I drove this from Dallas up to Oklahoma City. This is about five years ago now, four and a half, five years. So the uh, when I went to pick it up in Dallas, everything was ripped out. Like uh, all my plug wires ripped off, all the vacuum lines ripped off. It was just like, you know, I was like, what happened? Nobody knew anything. And I'm like, well, I had to get in the parking spot somehow. So did you tow it? Nobody knew shit. So, um, you know, I played with it a little bit, moved the distributor around a little bit, and I nursed it home, and I probably shouldn't have because I don't know if I did this then or what because I pretty much drove it here and parked it, and I haven't really messed with it since. So, but this is what I'm dealing with now. Um, that looks like uh, Forrest Gump's back, you know, not good. So we're, uh, we're going to pull this head, pull all this out. I don't know if I'm going to buy a whole new head or what. I'm going to rip it out. And, and these are things that are real light and really easy to get out. So, you know, it'll probably take me about 20 minutes. Um, and I've already pre-soaked all these bolts. And we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So we're going to remove our uh, intake manifold, exhaust manifold. I'm going to remove the thermostat housing here. I am going to take the power steering pump off anyway because that needs to be changed out anyway. I've known about that. I knew I knew about that in Hawaii and I just kind of nursed it until I shipped it. And I was, when I got it here, I was that's when I was going to do all this work to it. And then I never really had time. So I kind of just nursed it in Hawaii. And then, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it and start taking some bolts off. I already took the valve cover off, obviously. So whenever I take bolts off, I try to label everything. So when it goes back together, uh, you can actually get it back together. So these are already all lubed up. I put some PV blaster on these for the past two days. It's been cold as hell here in Oklahoma. So I haven't really been out here because the way I've got this thing positioned in the garage, I have to have the garage door open to even get in here, which is really smart. So, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so first thing I am removing, I'm gonna remove the fan. I've already got three out of the four bolts. I'm just gonna hold in the uh, the pulley here. I like smashing my fingers and hands, it's really fun. So get this out of the way. 
so I can get in here and spin this thing when I do get the head off. Check out my cylinders, see how they're doing. And I just like to have this out of the way. And I'll probably throw a new coat of paint on it because that'll add about three horsepower for everything you paint. So, bam, jam. Look at that. All right. And then for this hardware, because I'm notorious for losing hardware, I'm going to put this right back on here. And then we're going to remove the uh, thermostat housing. I'm just going to leave the hose connected to it. When uh, when I do figure out this whole scenario, I'm probably going to just change all the hoses to give the new owner all new, fresh stuff. I believe I changed this radiator when I was in Hawaii. I can't really remember. I had too many vehicles to know the history. So I do have a drain pan underneath here. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. This should be a half inch if I remember right. Yep, one half inch. Pop that. And I can't see. It should be right there. And we might get some stuff come out of this. Might tell us a little bit of a story. Nope, can't get it by hand yet. One of these days, my daughter will help me out with the editing so I can do the whole fast forward thing here, but I'm dumb as hell, so bear with me. When I go to take all these off, I'll just leave the last few bolts. So you don't have to watch me take off 600 fucking bolts. Oh, excuse my language. I am a sailor, so, but I am trying to watch my language, especially on this channel. And I'm trying to do a better person altogether personality. Because I am going to get out of the Navy one of these days. All right, let's see what comes out of here. Ooh, look at that. Yum, yum. Delicioso. Okay, so nothing really coming off there. So I'll take this guy out. All right. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and get into our mount bolts for all the... Uh, um, exhaust manifold and intake manifold and then we'll do our mount bolts up top last okay next thing I'm going to take off just to get it out of the way I need to change it anyway is this power steering pump we've had a leak on it for a long time and um, I'm just going to go ahead and rip it off and might as well replace it while we're in here so we've got these two bolts here obviously the pulley and then uh I'll take these off here. I'm gonna take it off with the whole pulley and then I'll pull the pulley off on the bench just cause I don't have a puller right now. So we'll deal with that later. But um, we'll go ahead and yank that bad boy out so we can get this manifold off. Okay, so somebody needs to be shot in the face here. So I got two metric bolts on the back of this. These are 15 millimeters. I doubt that's what was on here originally. These other ones seem to be either 5 eighths or 9 sixteenths. So we'll go ahead and get these off and then uh, continue. All right, so we're working on the last bolt. It goes to this bracket and then we'll end up taking that bracket off as well. And I think I can order this pump with the whole pulley attached. If I can do that, I probably just will. I'm gonna get this bad boy out of here. I did also forget well, this thing has lines attached to it, so I don't have to come to a conclusion with that here, but we'll deal with that shortly. As long as it's out of my damn way for right now, put all this right here. and then we'll get this bracket off. So this actually goes down to the bottom end as well, bolts in. So we'll take these two bolts out so we can get the intake off. Actually, I think I'm going to take the whole bracket off because I can't get the exhaust manifold out of the way. So I'll go ahead and get this off and uh, keep going. Okay, so to get this line off, we've got a one inch on the bottom. This is a five eighths on the top, but looks like Steve Buscemi was chewing on this thing. I've tried multiple times with this five eighths, but it just keeps mulling it up. So we're gonna try some vice grips here. Let's see if I can get this. We can 
hold it on the bottom. I've only got two hands. No, still. Try it this way so I got more of a throw on it. Oh yeah, she don't want to come out. Well, we might have to spin this thing around 600 times and take that whole fitting out. So, this is the stuff you're going to run into when you, you know, first off, A, don't take care of your stuff. And B, come into other people's projects, which I could wish I could blame this on somebody else, but this one's me. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off here, and then we'll just spin this whole thing around so the line doesn't get kinked up, and then we'll we'll either try to fix this fitting or whatever we gotta do. So let's go ahead and remove that. There we go, got one. And now, since that's loose, we'll do the old spinny spin. Worry about that fitting later. Usually, when I'm trying to fix it, and that's the last thing I got. Not have to worry about that dumbass fitting. All right, so this chunk of shit. Hopefully, I can find one with a pulley on it. Oh, look. And yeah. So, well, uh, damn. Jeez chewed up so i wonder if this is where i was leaking i don't know maybe the pump's not even bad i think it pumps bad now. but well you know what i'll probably just change that damn line too why not all right now i'm getting the uh bracket off that's not hand tight yet So we'll get this boy, bad boy off and then we can actually get our intake and manifolds off. Right. Okay. So of course, most of these bolts are different sizes. Makes a lot of sense. Those metric ones that were on the back, that's not how things are supposed to work. That was 15 millimeters. Not sure what the deal was there, but now you get my point. And actually, we could just leave that one installed and take the whole manifold back with it, but yeah, why not? We'll take it off. Okay, so we'll keep working this. And then we'll come back to these manifolds. And finally, the head bolts. That looks like the last bolt coming out now. Hopefully by hand. Yes. All right, now we'll get this bad boy out. Jam up. Make sure you mark all your hardware where they go. And then we'll probably just repaint this kind of stuff before we throw it back in, church it up a little bit. And uh, now we can go ahead and start looking at our uh, freeze plugs and all that. Check those out while we're down there. Okay, now that we've got our um, power steering pump bracket off, we're going to go ahead and remove these bolts here, take these manifolds back, and hopefully just kind of leave them in here. Uh, I don't want to remove the whole thing if I don't have to, but we'll see. And then uh, if we can get them back far enough, then we'll take these bolts out here. So we're going to go ahead and start with these. Let's take a gander here. Uh, hopefully, 9 16 Disco, all right. And I did soak these over and over and over for the past three or four days with some PV Blast, just to hopefully prevent them from snapping off on me. I really don't wanna to have to drill. Mm, that one don't wanna come out. Yeah, come on, baby, there we go. So, all right, we'll go ahead and uh, continue. And then when these are all off, we'll come back to you. Okay, so I've got all my top bolts out. I've got them all lined up over here. And I started going on the bottom ones here. So in between each flange, there should be a bolt on the bottom side. And they're a little bit harder to get to. So you gotta kind of just plug and play and figure it out between different extensions, swivel heads, however you gotta get in there, but you gotta go underneath the manifold and up in here. 
to get straight in there. So it's kind of a bad angle for cameras, but um, I'll try to get an aerial view of me getting the next one. Okay, so we're gonna attempt to get this bolt here on the bottom flange, all right? So what we're using here is a universal. And I wish I had put a little heat shrink on here to keep this from falling with weight, but we'll see if we can slide this jam joint. And I think this extension's too long. Yeah, let's try a smaller extension. So this is real time pissing me off stuff. So we'll try a smaller extension. Disco. All right, so if you can see that, sorry I'm blocking your view. Get my ratchet on here. figure out a way to get each one of these out. Sorry, the camera's shaking. I got it mounted to the hood here and I'm up here changing my religion right on top of this hood latch. So hopefully I can get that out by hand now. Disco. And I'll probably drop it in the drip pan below. Like I have everything else. Or at least, hopefully not that washer. Sweet, all right. So rinse and repeat and get the other ones out. All right, so real quick uh, trick here so I don't have to run into that again. So sometimes I'll use a heat shriek. I just got some electrical tape to put around your socket so it doesn't droop and it's still quite movable. So if you see that, helps when you're trying to get in somewhere tight. So we're gonna go ahead and attempt to use this on the remaining couple bolts and then hopefully get this stuff out of the way. All right, so it's the following day. I said some bad words last night trying to get these last two bolts out. I just finally got them out. Um, so the intake and manifold are off. Here, I just put a strap on here to kind of bring it back so I don't have to disconnect anything else. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and start doing our head bolts. I just verified we got a 5 8 here. So we're going to start taking all these head bolts off. And when you take these off, you want to make sure you either put them in a piece of cardboard or foam or something. Um, so you put them back in the same way. So this forward bolt is the only one that's a little different because it goes directly into the uh, uh, thermostat housing so this one is actually a wet seal kind of deal here so um, you do want to make sure that you mark these when they come out so we're gonna go ahead and start yanking this thing out and then this thing only weighs I think about five pounds so it should be a relatively easy yank and yank and pull so obviously this is a lot easier to do when the engine is out um, but I'm trying to not do that so hopefully the tops of these cylinders don't uh, don't look like bad news bears so that's that's my hope you're gonna be right here with me hopefully uh hopefully i can just finish this top end out throw a coat of paint on it and call it a day um so let's go ahead and get into it uh taking these bolts out fun all right so we've got our breaker bar set up because these are torqued pretty high and our template set up so we're gonna Move the whole truck, holy crap. So once you break the torque, you can put your ratchet on here. Holy cannoli, this thing is on there. And of course, I haven't open, uh, ordered any gaskets. Man, I am a fat body, ain't I? This is a strange angle because I got cords in front of my face. The job is so much harder to do when you got cameras. All right, so let's see if I can get the regular ratchet on here now. All right. 
good money. I don't own a lot of snap-on tools, but this little thing, invaluable. And I didn't even know I had it. I forgot about it. I found it in a secret drawer. So, yeah. This bolt goes right into that water area of your engine. So this one gets a little bit different application and torque than all the others. So, bam, jam. And then we'll rinse and repeat all the way up. Okay, so here we go. We got all the top bolts out. Got everything in this uh, little chart here, except the last bolt, all right? So something I wanted to touch on that last bolt, maybe not so much of this model, but this last one here that comes out, of course you can't see, especially in a, a uh, XJ, a Cherokee, you'll have a shit, a piece of the hood right here. I don't know. Uh, there's a, a lap. So when you take this out, you, you have to leave this bolt in and it'll come out with it. And when you go to put your head back in, you got to make sure you put this one in dangling out because once you get it in, you got to pull the head back out if you didn't put that bolt in. So if you've got a Cherokee, leave this bolt in especially upon installation. You won't be able to get it out otherwise, but, um, so we're pretty much ready to go. I did forget about the starboard side here, or the, well, after looking forward to the right side. So we've got our ground wire here, which I need to redo that anyway. And then our alternator bracket, there's one bolt here. So, just my light. So there's a bolt here I gotta take off of this one here, and then our coil, there's two bolts on there to take this coil off and we'll let that kind of flop off to the side and then uh, should pop right up. So we'll go ahead and remove that stuff. Okay, so to remove these, what are these? Like maybe 9 16 so, All right, Disco, so we'll take these off. Can't really get a socket in this one. So we'll just move this guy off here. I already removed the coil, I left the bracket. So I just kind of loosened it up a little bit and then popped the coil out and just, I'll, we'll let that dangle by its wires over there. And then I'll leave that bracket on there. Oh my goodness, I should've got a ratchet wrench. But I'm too lazy to walk over 10 feet to my toolbox and get it. A Richie Ratchet, whatever you want to call it. That's what a dog bone. So I don't know. I'm excited. Okay, so this bad boy is out. Let's make sure we don't bag that so I can't figure out what the hell it is. And then still got a 916 with our swivel on here. Don't really need the swivel, but I don't want to take it off, so I'll put that out so I can have my both hands here. Now I've got two different gloves on. Is this not a 916th? Boy, I'm looking like a dum dum here. Or is it just marred up? Oh, that's just marred up. Okay, we'll go back to the wrench here. All right, so we'll take this off. And just for continuity purposes, Bam, jam. And then for the coil, what I used was, uh, let's see, a T40. So I just loosened these bolts up here. The bracket became a little bit loose. And then a Phillips, number two Phillips for this screw. And it'll open this bracket up and then I just popped that coil out. I did take all my plug wires off just so they're out of the way. I don't damage them when I go to lift this head uh, because it's extremely awkward and heavy. So I'm probably gonna have to have my bang trophy come out here and hold the front end of it for me so I can crawl up in here like a monkey, lift this thing out, and then I'll have her kind of guide it out. So, all right, stick around for that, yeah.
Get some gloves in the box, kid, all right? Okay. So you don't get your party little hands dirty. Now I'm gonna crawl up in here like a spider monkey. And this is awesome. So this is a lot easier to do when you rip the engine out, if it's on a engine stand. But uh, no, we're gonna get rid of this. So pretty much what I want you to do is help guide it out, okay? okay. So I'm gonna try to pick it up. And of course, I don't have a, we'll use this guy. Okay, so I think we're good there. Okay, so what I want you to do, see this bolt right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of stand on the bumper. I'm sure you got a cranial. That was for comedic effect. All right, so <laughs> stand here or um, grab What's that a joint. Never mind. Tell me. It's a helmet, a Navy helmet. All right, so here you go. Jam up, yank. Oh, why is it so heavy? Well, they used to make them out of plastic back in the 1930s, but they determined that's not good. They determined that that was not economically viable. Does that mean? Come on, bad boy. I think we're stuck in that. Okay, go back down. And... Well, we have pistons, I can see that. All right, so now, uh, give me a second. It's sticking over here in this hole on the uh, exhaust manifold. So, attempt number two. And, damn it, I don't know I'm doing it. So I'm sitting here supporting myself on the carb. It's not a carb, but you get the idea. Okay, so I'll support myself on the hood that's not supported. And ready? One, two, three. Okay, so I think we're up. So now I should be able to crawl on the other side and hopefully you get it out, okay? All right, so just sit down for a second. Ah, oh, it's just so damn awkward. All right, round two. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this here. It's always nice to sit on something and change your orientation. So here we've got our head gasket. Um, I've removed all these rods because they're Edward Scissorhands and on us. So, you ready? Let's Looks try this. Greasy. Yeah, it's a bit greasy. And that fucking bolt, or that stud over there, did it again. Oh no, we're good. We're good right there. All right. And halt. Okay, so it's up. That's all I need. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so now, acquisition. Grab that little pillow, boat pillow thing. I don't want to damage my radiator. I've got enough stuff to change on this. Oh, eesh, Nikes. I don't think that that's good. Oh, what's with all the green stuff? Yeah, so, I, I don't know, I'll have to check the manual. I think that's bad. <laughs> so, and we can't reuse this gasket, so, you know. But this is our head gasket. This is antifreeze, but, well, shit. Okay, well, we'll, uh. <laughs> Figure this out. What is it? It's antifreeze. So that's not good. It's all good. We got a shot back. Don't we got some stray cats around here? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, well, they like that stuff. They like okay. antifreeze? Yeah. It's sweet. Thanks. It's real sweet. 
they eat it. Yeah, then they die. Old farmers back home in Quincy, yeah. they would pour antifreeze and then the stray dogs and cats come lick it up and die. Aww. Yeah, it's bad news bears, right? So, um, mm. all right, well, we'll get is, this is all cleaned up and like see what's going on. Ooh, these lifters don't look too hot either. So, okay. Isn't it painful for them to like die like that? Yeah, probably, because it's poison. Okay, here, hold this real quick. Yeah, just support it so it doesn't fall and kill somebody. Because I don't got Johnny Cochran to help me out. All right. All right, here we go. And jump. We did it. We did it. Yay. All right, hey. All right so let's see uh, the next day. Things were getting a little wild last night. I had my kid out here helping me to yank this uh, uh, cylinder head out. I was messing with her a little bit, so uh, don't take offense. Um, so we did have a lot of antifreeze in there when I yanked this thing off. I don't think that we had a head gasket leak or anything like that. I think it was just the fluid in that head that when I took it out at an angle, I do not have a cherry picker, obviously. Um, I'm gonna need one here shortly though, but uh, I'm doing my best to leave this engine in the bay. Um, so, that being said, now I'm going to clean the insides where the uh, antifreeze got to. I've already cleaned the cylinder heads with uh, some sea foam, but I want to get in there. I've got a little shot vac attachment tool, kind of with my air vacuum. Um, but I want to take these lifters out and take a look at the camshaft, make sure that thing is rotating like it's supposed to, because if that's jacked, that's going to jack everything else up that I've got over here. So I'll show you the bottom of what this head looks like. These valves, they were slim slamming around, so bad news. So we're probably going to go ahead and take off the, uh, take the alternator bracket off, just get some stuff out of the way, and I'll probably end up taking the timing chain off anyway, uh, just to make sure those sprockets are lined up, because I thought I had a timing issue in the first place. So um, lots more to do on this, but right now we're going to clean this thing up and pull these lifters out. So I have a magnet tool, usually yanks out, um, usually no problem. I haven't done one in a long, long time, but uh, yeah, we'll get into it. So uh, yeah, um, I'm already losing daylight. So we'll see how long I can go today. I'm trying to get this thing done by the end of the month. Two more projects after this. So. All right. Okay, so here's our cylinder head that we pulled off. Looks like we got some locked up, probably bent valves here. I don't know if we'll, I'm gonna clean this head up and see if the head is still good and I can just replace the internals or if I'll just order a whole new head, I can get a whole new head, everything built up on eBay for 400. So we're gonna clean it up and see uh, how she looks. I'm hoping that the camshaft is okay. Cause if that's jacked up, then the lifters came up and that's how we got all jacked here. So we'll, we'll check that uh, camshaft once we pull these lifters out. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's dirty. She's dirty, dirty. But uh, we do have one spark plug. That was probably the problem. So uh, yeah, I don't really see any evidence of a head gasket leak. Maybe a little bit here, but nothing that was showing all that uh, antifreeze that was in the cylinder. So these ports here, and I believe this one, yeah. So these will actually move uh, antifreeze through the uh, head and into the block. So I think that there was some fluid still up in here. And then when I was yanking around on it, it just poured out and it looked a lot worse than it did. So I don't think we had a head gasket leak. Even if we did, we'll throw a new head gasket on because not gonna reuse that one, that'd be bad. So yeah, I still gotta order all that stuff because I'm real smart. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and, uh, sorry about these pillows, Grandpa Bill. These were pillows for the boat seats. But I don't use them anyway, so it's it's uh, doing its job now. So we'll go ahead and get into this jam joint. So these right here, ah, dang it, it's in my way. These are your lifters, those little jam joints right there. Now when the camshaft comes up or down on those lobes, those things will jam jam around up and down. And then I do have a rod here. So this is one of our lifter rods here. This joint will set right down on there and then wing ding like that, pushing that rocker arm, which in turn pushes the intake or exhaust valve 
yang, 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 up and down to uh, keep your timing and all that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this block. Um, I've got a little attachment tool I can get in there because I don't want to pull these lifters with junk in here because then that can get into the bottom of the uh, crankcase down there and that would be bad news. So we'll go ahead and clean this crap out and then come back to removing these lifters. And I usually use a, uh, a magnet, so, and they'll just kind of slide up. But because this thing, this thing is kind of gunky and dirty, we might have, uh, we might have to spray some stuff in there to get them to loosen up. I don't know. I'm hoping that some lifters were just seized and that's what caused the issues. But because if it's a camshaft, then I got to yank all this stuff out, which I think I'm going to take that off anyway and just check the timing. We'll just pull the damn water pump anyway. Why not? Since we're in here, might as well just re repack all this stuff and, uh, you know, make sure it's good. So, okay, well, let's get into it. I'm going to probably pull this bracket off, um, pull the alternator off, just throw that joint to the side, pull this off, pull that off, and then um, everything out. Yeah, so, you know, I like to waste my time and do things that probably don't need to be done, but this motor's... I, I, I did not do the maintenance that I needed to do on it when I lived in Hawaii. I didn't have a garage. I didn't have a shop. I didn't, I didn't have anything. So it was kind of just like, well, add oil to it, add power steering fluid. And, um, I didn't have a lot of, uh, that's kind of, I didn't have a lot of off time that I wanted to, uh, do that. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. So here's our, uh, makeshift tool that I've been using. Um, I've been doing this for a long time now, um, but crevice tool, a little piece of aquarium tubing, tape it up, and now I've got a small area that I can get up in there and all those little crevices on this head, and I'll show you how this works. Okay, let's use our makeshift tool here, put it to the test. I've got my shot back plugged in because this is definitely not the second take. Here we go. <laughs> Seafoam, seafoam, it's my favorite thing. All right, so what I've got here is a brand new, never before used detail brush. I'm pulling all the loose strands because you don't want anything to come out of here. So we're gonna go around here, clean these cylinder walls, clean the tops of the cylinders, and then we're gonna get down in here in the nitty gritty, all right? Make sure all this stuff if there's any chunks of anything or something nasty from this head being nasty and the engine being nasty, this stuff will clean it up. And you can add sea foam directly to your engine, so even if it gets down in there after we pull the lifters out, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to be changing the oil again anyway. So, and we'll have to clean this whole surface before we put a new uh, head gasket on here anyway. But, Get up in here nice and good. Go, go gadget arms. Oh, come on, you bastard. All right. So you get the idea. So scrub this nice and good, and then we'll go back in here with our vacuum and then pull these lifters and start spinning this engine. Make sure that camshaft moves. All right, so we've got our compressed air here. We'll just... definitely see there's some bowel for playing patty cake there but uh so we'll go ahead and high speed this out and then we'll hit it with the vacuum one more time and uh call her a day okay so we've kind of sprayed everything out vacuumed it once more. I'm right in the way of the light, but 
that's about as clean as we're gonna get without removing the block and turning it upside down and all that. But now we can go ahead and remove these lifters. So I do use a magnet usually for that. I don't know if my little magnet's gonna be powerful enough. Come on now. So I like this flexible magnet. It's on a copper wire, but it's actually pretty strong. I got this off an aviation tool website called The Yard Store. I don't know if you can see that. Come on now. So I had a bigger magnet, especially for this that I used, and I don't know what happened to it. Come on now, get in there. Right. So now pull up, and this ain't strong enough. So, I might just go get a lifter tool. I have a little tool you can buy. I think I'm just gonna do that. I like excuses to buy tools anyway, so we'll go ahead and get it. We'll be back. Okay, so we drove around town for about 40 minutes trying to find one of these. So normally when I remove the lifters, I use a magnet, but I lost my bigger magnet tool. So I was trying to use a smaller one. It just didn't have the oomph. So I figured it was a good time to just buy this tool anyway. This is a lifter removal tool. I found this at Napa Auto. Um, so pretty much it's a slide hammer kind of deal. And this piece will expand it to the lifter when you when you uh, spin it down. So it says you have to use a 7 16 wrench. It's kind of dirty for a brand new tool, is it not? But, so let's take a gander here. So we got this joint. And it says you need to use a 7 16 wrench on this. And then you spin this and it should expand. So, all right, let's try it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this joint in here. But then you got to stick this wrench in here, so that's not a very good design. They could have just come up with something better than that. And then spin. Okay, I feel it locked in there. So now that it's locked in that lifter, I guess you just... Oh, very cool. So that's great news. So with these lifters kind of stuck in there, I was hoping it was just my magnet. And not the camshaft worn out and smashing on these and mushrooming it, mushrooming it out. So this is a good sign. Got a little coking here, but you know, no big deal. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the lifters and then we can get in there and look at the camshaft and see if it's spinning. I hope the camshaft is spinning, but if not, I'm gonna attempt to remove the camshaft through by removing the radiator and through the grill instead of pulling the whole engine as normally. I don't wanna pull the engine. I have a engine stand, but I don't have a cherry picker yet. Um, every time I've needed one, I just rented it or borrowed one from a friend because I didn't really have the space to keep one. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and remove the rest of these and then check out this camshaft. Okay. So I got all the lifters out. Two of them did not want to come out. This little guy and the second to the last one. So my worry was they would be mushroomed, but none of these were mushroomed. I am going to change the camshaft just to be sure. But when you got a lifter that's stuck, I wish I'd done a video on it. But um, so this little uh, clip in here, if you remove that with a screwdriver, and then you can use your magnet and take out the center pieces, then you can get your tool in there to yank this thing out. So, little tip. Disassembly of the head. <laughs> I am helping you through positive encouragement. You suck. I'm not feeling very encouraged. You suck at your job. Okay, so we've got all the lifters out. I did remove the distributor. Um, I am going to replace this camshaft, and my idea was to snake it through here, uh, come right through the grill. I, I removed the radiator as well. Um, and I got a bunch of new parts in over there, just waiting to go back on. I'm still waiting for valves to come in for the uh, cylinder head. So I am going to have to pull this engine. I did just get a cherry picker, made a video on the little uh, Rust-Oleum restoration on that. 
So we're going to go ahead and yank this joint. I didn't want to. Um, I've got bags in here and kind of protecting this from when I was cleaning it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the Jeep out of the garage a little bit so I can get the hood to open up a little more and get that cherry picker in here and rip this thing out. So I'm going to call this video for now just as the top end uh, tear down because I think we're already at like 45 minutes or something like that. So um, we'll do uh, another video of putting it all back together and then hopefully getting it running and all that jazz. So I uh, appreciate you guys uh, hanging around. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, make sure you put them in the comments. I know it's a long video, but if you're watching this, it's not like you're just watching it because uh, if you're into it this far, you're looking to do this specific job and not just one of my friends watching the video to give me a view. You know what I mean? So if you've got specific questions or whatever, uh, you know, shoot me a shoot me a message and I always respond. Um, you know, I'm not that big of a YouTube star or anything yet because, uh, you know, I'm up and coming. Um, but, you know, uh, if you've got any questions, you know, shoot them in the comments and I'll... Uh, I'll reply. So if you go through my videos, because by the time I post this, I want to be able to have the other one where it's all going back together, um, going in. So if you've got any questions, you know, shoot them in the comments. And then, uh, also look through my videos for the, uh, install and everything else, uh, blase, blase, but I'll show you what I do kind of got going on here. Um, so I was going to get a whole new cylinder head, but looking at this, I think we're okay. I do got a couple bent intake valves that are just bad news bears. I did throw some new paint on the fan and some of the parts and stuff. Got a new power steering pump. Uh, can't get one with a pulley, so I've got a puller. I'll just pull it off and swap it. No big deal. But I've got, see, one, two, three that are just a little wonky. So I was a little nervous with the camshaft. Maybe the lobes got messed up or... Uh, maybe these weren't getting oiled right. I don't know. I think it was a timing issue. So we're going to change the timing chain and all that stuff. And we're going to be pulling all that. So I'll make a video of probably yanking this motor, doing the timing cover and replacing the camshaft and all that. So, uh, if you've got other issues going on, check my other videos, uh, cause I probably somewhere have uh, a description of what's going on with that so uh, once again like subscribe share uh, all that crap if you've got any uh, questions hit me up and uh, if you've got any comments or ways I could do it better hit me up uh, I already know that when I should have when I took the head off I had all the push rods still in there and it was like eh, you know Edward scissor hands it on me so I shouldn't have done that uh, I was using my kid as help I didn't have a cherry picker at that time I do now uh, I would have used it if I had it Trust me, because that was not easy. So, um, but yeah, distributors hanging out back there. Kind of just wrapped up, you know, blase, blase. So we'll get this thing back together and get her on the road. Thanks for hanging out.